In this video, I will go through the steps I take on how to train a hawk. Flying a hawk takes a lot of work, and it's not just hawks. Training and flying birds of prey can sometimes take weeks, even months of preparation and training. Training hawks can be broken down into different steps, and for the past week I have been filming myself taking these steps with a brand new hawk. As this is going to be quite a long video, I've broken it down and you can see each steps at these times here. So here she is, I've never seen her before and she's never seen me before so quite understandably she's a little bit nervous and isn't she stunning? So this is a female house hawk, she's I think three years old, she is going to join Patsy and hopefully they will fly together. Typically when you get a new hawk you are either the first person that has ever handled the hawk and so you have to start from the very beginning or if you acquire an older hawk that has had previous owners they will be able to tell you the hawk's history. This hawk is Neva. I know she's had some previous training, but I don't know to what level or when this was done. She's a bit of a mystery. With this in mind, I needed to gauge what stage of training she was at. An incredibly important process that every hawk needs to be comfortable with from an early stage on is being weighed. So the first thing I did was bring her to the scales and see if she would stand on them. She did this relatively calmly and I was able to get a weight reading. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video about why we weigh the hawks. I then perched her out on the lawn to let her take in her new surroundings. Her weight doesn't really tell me a lot at this early stage. My plan to work out where she is in terms of training is just to go through the stages as if she has never seen a person before. She's quite comfortable on the glove and so that already puts us at an advantage. Another incredibly important stage of training is getting the hawk to feed on the fist. We may look at the hawk and think, wow, what an amazing predatory animal, how could it be nervous? But to her, humans are a big scary thing, and for all she knows, I'm getting ready to eat her. Getting a hawk to let their guard down and move their focus from falconer to food is a huge first step. She was looking at the food and I could tell she wanted to eat, she just wasn't sure about me yet. I pulled a piece off and passed it to her beak. This allows her to begin the understanding that I am safe to be around and it's okay to eat. This worked even better than I was expecting and she took it in straight away and that's going to really speed up her training. Day two started with a weight check again. As you've just seen, I took her out of a box. She's not going to be living in there, but as this is the box she was delivered in, she has traveled a long distance to get to me and has spent quite a lot of time in there. So she sees this as a safe place. I don't want to overstimulate her, and so while she's still getting comfortable with her new surroundings and with me, it's nice to be able to provide her with that safe space to relax in overnight. She has lost only five grams overnight. This really isn't much weight loss, and so I suspect she's still a little fat. With muscle being such a heavy fiber, if she was fit, I would expect her to lose more weight than that with the small amount of food that I gave her yesterday. This tells me that although she's very receptive to training, I would assume that she's had a bit of a break in flying and has been fed up. The next stage of training, now that I know she's comfortable feeding on the fist, is to ask her to jump to the glove for food, rather than just presenting it straight to her feet. As I approached, I wiggled the food between my finger and thumb to make it obvious to her that I had it, and so there was no reason for her to jump away from me. I held the food at a distance that was just out of reach of her taking it with her beak, but not so far away that she would hit the end of her tether if she jumps. This stage, like with all the other stages before, will often require a lot of patience and waiting till the hawk makes the first move. This wasn't an issue with this hawk, so tomorrow, the real fun starts. By day three, she was getting a lot more comfortable being picked up and I no longer required a small offering of food to get her onto the glove. At 998 grams, she again has not lost as much weight as I was expect with the amount of food that she has been eating. I have a feeling that we're getting to a comfortable weight at a little under a kilogram. 
So it was time to take her into the flying field for the first time. Until now, all she had done is look at the field while perched on the weathering lawn. I had already been out and set a flying perch and a crayons up. A crayons is a falcon return for a training line and it's important to secure her to the training line as at this point I had no idea how she was going to behave in the field. I put her on the perch and this was a pivotal moment. I stood about a metre away from her and raised my glove with a small offering of food and she jumped to the glove almost instantly and you could tell at this point that she knew what was going on. You could just see the excitement on my face. With each flight I increased the distance between us as well as a visual cue of me putting the food from my bag to the glove I'm training her with a whistle. This is for in the future when she is flying free if we ever lose sight of each other and I want to call her to the glove, I can whistle and she will come and find me. To train this into her, I wait until she has flown to her glove and then just as she takes the food, I give a whistle. This helps to associate hearing a whistle with getting a piece of food. For the last and longest flight, I give her a really nice big piece of food. It's always good to end a flying session on a positive note. So we are now halfway through the week and I thought I'd just drop in and tell you how it's been training this hawk. I honestly do not have a negative thing to say about this bird. For a hawk that's only been here for four days, she's incredibly calm whilst perched out on the lawn and she's really easy to walk around with. She's also shown absolutely no aggression towards me and I haven't once felt her grip through the glove, even whilst food is involved. Apart from the occasional mantling, she's very well mannered on the glove and she doesn't try to grab the food from me whilst I'm moving it into position. Yesterday was her first ever time in the flying field, and for the most part, she kept her focus on me. She understandably liked to take in her surroundings, but as soon as I was presenting food, the focus came straight back to me. This bird has been a real treat to train, and I'm really excited to see what she's capable of and what she can achieve over the next four days. On day four, I set two flying perches up in the field with the crayons. It was clear that she was used to flying to the fist, but when she starts flying free, I want to be able to direct her without having to call her to a glove every time. I start by flying her a short distance to a glove, just to make sure her attention is on me and she knows that I have food. There's no point trying to do the longest flights in the world at this stage, as the crayons just drags in the grass and they start to struggle. I then try calling her to the perch, she is a little hesitant at first, and this is a perfect time to show why she's on the crayons. At the last second, she decided against landing on the perch and tried to fly over it. I don't want to reward her for sitting on the floor, so I picked her up without any food and put her back on the perch. Her second attempt went a lot more smoothly. I then just walked between the perches, calling her each time. I find this kind of quick fire flying just really helps with her response time and her focus on me, as well as really rooting that whistle in as a signal. When her reaction slows, I know it's time to stop, so I call her once more for, to the perch for the last bit of food. I ended the session with a nice big reward on the glove again. By day five, she was now comfortable enough in her new surroundings to have a bath. She's gone back up in weight to 998 grams because I rewarded her well yesterday. On day five, I just wanted to reinforce her glove training. The key to successful animal training is consistency. As you can see, she's not as interested in me today as she was yesterday. That's not a bad thing as it has given me valuable information about what weight she should be flying at. I had a much better performance yesterday when she was 10 grams lighter. 
It's clear now how useful the perch training is at such an early stage. Now she's comfortable flying to a perch, I didn't have to walk forwards and backwards putting her on the perch after every single flight. This also helps with fitness, as she is flying to the perch each time without a food reward, meaning I can get more flights out of her before she is full. Like every other day, I finished the flying session with a nice big food reward. So it's day six and it is the day that we have all been waiting for. Today, she is going to be flying free for the first time. Last night I put some flying jesses and a bell on her. I did this last night because it's really important when you're flying a bird free for the first time that nothing is different. The moment they suspect something has changed, they will throw all of your hard work out the window. So I did it the night before, which gives her the night to calm down. She's not yet got a tail mount on, and that's something that I will be doing in the future and making a video on, but for now, she's gonna have to be leg mounted with her telemetry. So let's go and see how this goes. As you can see, I had already been out and put a piece of food on the perch. As this was her first time flying free with me, I wanted to make sure her focus was on me from the get-go. I then called her over to the other perch for another piece of food. So far, all was good, so I knocked down one perch and started flying her to the globe. She has come down to the exact weight that I wanted today at 990 grams, and as you can tell, this was a good weight for her. She's not overly keen, but she still has a good reaction time. This sets a really good foundation that we can build fitness on and over time increase that flying weight. Like all the other days this week, I finished the session with a nice big reward. <sighs> it went okay. <laughs> I've had so much fun this week training this hawk. Now I must tell you, this is not really a real world example. She's already had a lot of training, as you could tell. Usually when training a hawk, uh, there's so much more that goes into it than what I have shown in this video. There's an entire process called manning, which I haven't even spoke about. And that's where you sit with the hawk and just have to let the hawk get used to you. And that takes a lot of time. Usually the steps that we go through, getting them to feed on the fist, getting them to step to the fist, getting them to jump, and even getting them to fly for the first time, can take a lot of work and a lot of patience. She's done it so quickly, and I'm so impressed at what she's achieved over the past week. Well, six days. If you would like to keep up with what this hawk is doing, I'm going to be putting up a video in a few weeks about what she has been doing and what she has managed to achieve over a few weeks. She doesn't yet have a name, as you might have noticed, I didn't once give her a name throughout this entire video, so I am passing it to you. Leave a comment below about what you think we should call this bird. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more falconry videos in the future, then please subscribe. That's all for this video, thank you for watching!